Coming up on Tech News today, how Facebook places could get you in trouble unless you let everyone know you're at home with your knives. Also, we take a look at wavelength envy and the problems that it can cause. And you love madness. You may not own what you think you own. We'll tell you why. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Friday, September 10th, 2010. Tech News Today is brought to you by Slingbox. Watch your favorite TV shows when you're away from home with Slingbox. Check out Slingbox at a Best Buy near you or visit slingbox.com slash twit. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. Behind the boards, our excellent producer, Eric Lanigan. Hey, guys. How are you? Doing well. Good to see you. Just and good to see dance. the Terpster. Yay! Terpster's back. Yay! I'm Our just confused. How did I get back on here? Yeah. Someone's going to get fired. It's like we emailed each other and then Skyped and tested out a, a connection and then put you on the show just, just by accident. It. Right. Exactly. How Whoops. did he get here? It's so weird. Mark well, Turpin. I got my name and everything. Crazy. Yeah. That's the uh, sure. Hypothetical help, of course, uh, among uh, many other podcasts, uh, and and a very popular appearance last time you were on the show. We're glad to have you back. Yeah, I'm, very, I'm glad to be back and talk about the tech news today. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> right, because that's the name of the show. Finally, you remember it. Uh, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit Court today ruled on a longstanding case involving selling software on eBay. And this is not going to be good for those of you who hate the EULA. The case was Werner versus Autodesk. Uh, Timothy Werner had picked up an old copy of Autodesk at, uh, I don't know if it was a garage sale. It was a garage sale-like thing. He bought it used uh, and tried to sell it on eBay. Autodesk tried to stop it. Werner said, hey, I, you know, I, this is, I got the right of first sale here. I can sell a copy that I own. Autodesk said, no, you're violating the license. The license says you can't sell it. Werner said, I didn't agree to that license. I never bought it from you. Uh, so they took it to court, and the Ninth Circuit Court said, no, nope, Autodesk has it right. Uh, the license says it can't be transferred, and since it can't be transferred, uh, Werner can't actually own it, and therefore the right of first sale doesn't apply because Autodesk still owns that software. Although he did say, well, no one else is using this license, and it's something that I guess Autodesk could look up and, and say, oh, yeah, that's true. But they're still uncomfortable with the idea of it being transferred to somebody else and then somebody else making a small profit off of it. Right. And uh, the American Library Association filed an amicus brief in this case because they're saying, wait a minute now. Uh, if, if companies can do this, they can slap a EULA on anything and say, we own it and you're just licensing it. This could be bad news for libraries because more and more software is at libraries. But it also means that anybody could just slap a license on anything they sell and say, well, you're not actually buying this from me. You're just licensing it. You know, Amazon, uh, where I buy a lot of my digital music, has one of these license uh, situations in place where I'm actually just a licensee. I am not an owner of the music that I've purchased from them. Right. So one day when I say, I hate these 3,000 songs in my library, these DRM-free songs, Tom, you want them for 10 bucks? I would be violating uh, the law, their law. In fact, the uh, and it makes it, the whole thing gets really complicated because a lot of this stuff is going to start changing hands. Depending on how you read the Amazon license, it, it says you can't do anything with the files, yeah. which would include playing them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which I think it's detrimental to the idea of buying them. If I was like in your house and you were playing the music, would you have to listen through headphones? Would if if I heard them, is that violating the uh, maybe the not because well? we're in the private home of the person who bought the music. But if we were out on the street. But I probably couldn't have the, or or in, in Terpster's house. Yeah. You can't turn yeah. the, uh, the. Uh, well, no, just because we don't like that sort of music around here. So. <laughs> well, of course. We would appreciate it. You just wouldn't but like I like to music. enjoy most of my music on my ghetto blaster out on the street on the hood. You well, know, I was, or yeah, the I hood. was thinking when you're on walking the through the West End with your yeah. uh, big jam box on your, on your. Well, exactly, uh, on just your carrying arm. it around. That's a just public performance. out some tunes, you know. Well, you can't do that anymore. No? Uh, in fact, this could be applied to all kinds of other goods and services. The Electronic Frontier Foundation wrote, uh, if, if this is right, 
then not only don't you own the software you buy, but any copyright owner can simply recite the magic words and effectively outlaw libraries, used bookstores, DVD rentals, among many other things. Yeah, so used bookstores, used music stores, used clothing stores. There are a lot of used stores. Used furniture. Used furniture. <laughs> a lot we have of a that, license to use that furniture. A lot yeah. of these <laughs> places are not just sort of, oh, they're, they're eBay sellers and resellers and types of things. These are actually places that you go in and everything's kosher and you get a little money. And, you know, in the digital world, is that just going to go away? It can't be. The judge in this I case won't have it. Uh, did did say that he was he was sympathetic uh, to the American Library Association's brief, uh, but he said Congress is free to modify the first sale doctrine and assent, and the essential step defense if it deems these or other policy considerations to require a different pr approach. So he's essentially saying, look, the way the law is written, this is the way it has to be. I agree that there are some some dire considerations here but that's up to congress to change not the not the judge yeah i mean this sort of thing though has been in computer games for ages i mean i'm a big world of warcraft player i know a lot of other people are um and for example i pay a monthly subscription fee but i don't own my account um i rent it from blizzard the company who make the game um and you're seeing it more and more um with with computer games uh, there's a big pre-owned market for a lot of console titles and the developers themselves don't like it because what it means is that while they make money off the first time that game was sold, all subsequent sales just go to GameStop or whoever is selling the uh, the pre-owned titles. Um, but what some of them have started trying to do is to try to offer more content when you buy it to kind of incentivize people to go and buy it directly from as new uh, so that if you did buy something secondhand, while you get it, you miss out on all the little extras or any little bonus things like that. So maybe there'd be a better way for people to try, you know, Autodesk to turn around and say, okay, yeah, but if you buy it from us new, with a new license, you get like a free 3D thing. Yeah. Right, some plugins or some or support. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what the, how the whole open source uh, industry is built on. It's, it's figuring out how to sell other things of value in addition to the software, because the software is freely available, and yet at the same time we have the we have these laws sort of protecting an older way of doing business. Uh, these are going to change as things go along. And bringing up WoW is a good example, or Eve Online, or any of those games where you have invested a lot of time in creating a character and and gathering goods and talents. Mm. That character is yours, and yet oh, yeah. legally it's not. Legally, it belongs to whoever you're renting the game from. It's ridiculous. You're it's like, what, to. five years plus of my life? Yeah. Uh, probably real time as well. It's quite sad. Um, and, you know, at any time they could turn around and say, no, that's fine, we'll delete that, or, you know, or, oh, we're, we're closing down, that's it. You know, and it's, it's the kind of nature of the beast, really. And because there's no alternative, there's never really been that much of a problem about it. No one really minds. That's just how it is. All right, let's uh, take a look at another story from Nokia. Uh, they have appointed the first ever non-Finnish CEO of the device manufacturing company, best known for uh, handsets. They're the dominant handset maker in the world. Stephen Elop is the new chief executive of Nokia. Or how do you say it in uh, in your corner of the world? Nokia? Nokia. Like potato Nokia. Nokia. Yeah, yeah Nokia. Yeah. Let's I say thought it was Nokia. Yeah. yeah. Noki. <laughs> I'm just going to say that Finland phone maker thing place. Uh, Mr. Mr. Elop is now the uh, is now the CEO or will be starting September 21st. And he comes over from Microsoft. He was the head of business software there. Which is where Microsoft makes a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, as you far think as about, Microsoft division started go. right at the 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 Vista debacle, uh, the release of Vista. So he he uh, he presided over that. Uh, the release of Windows 7 and the release of Microsoft Office for Windows and sort of preparing Microsoft Office for Mac. So some significant pieces of software there. Uh, yeah, so he's only been at Microsoft for 20 months, and he is the first non-Finnish head of the new Nokia. And it's funny, at a, at a recent press conference, apparently Elop had to field a lot of questions about his knowledge of Finland and does he understand Nokia's... Uh, very extreme, being part of the Finnish culture. And you you have to figure that since Nokia has, has taken such a hit in the American market, that this is maybe something that, I mean, 
Nokia probably has to start thinking about the American market in a new way rather well, than... Well, he, he could bring in some perspective. He's Canadian, yeah. uh, but, but the North American market is something that he can, he can shed some light on. Uh, he's leaving his current job, like you said, after only 20 months. Uh, prior to working at Microsoft, he was at Juniper Networks, Adobe Systems, and Macromedia. He's the guy that kind of stewarded Macromedia into being purchased by Adobe. Now, I don't think that you could jump to the conclusion that he's going to steward Nokia into being bought by someone, but he does know a little bit about acquisitions. Is, is maybe Nokia going to position themselves to acquire someone? Right, because hiring someone like this that, that seems to have more of that business background rather than the innovative Steve Jobs kind of visionary background doesn't make it sound a whole lot like Nokia. I mean, Nokia has such competition anyway in that market, you know, from Android and iPhone, and, and they would really have to come out of the gates with something amazing design-wise, um, innovation-wise, in order to compete. Although, if you make a great... I mean, what if... Uh, I don't know, he's coming from Microsoft. Just thinking out loud here. Mm -hmm. What happened, happened to that uh, cool Nokia concept watch thing that was green and did everything and stretched around and was a phone and it cleaned itself and solar charged you know that whole concept thing is that just a kind of a sci-fi pipe dream well that's what are, are they going to make this it's an interesting thing about nokia they've got great r and d uh, they, they've got an incredible prototypes and concept phones but they don't seem to be able to bring them successfully to the market uh, they they've done okay with their tablets but the nokia n series phones uh, we're well ahead of every other smartphone. Mm. And you, you see these stories about him, and like Nokia has been left behind as, as others have, play, have pioneered the smartphone space. Nokia pioneered the smartphone space. They were the first to come out with really, truly smartphones, but they just didn't get people to, to use them. Uh, and, and especially here in North America, where they, they didn't get contracts with the carriers. But, but even worldwide, those phones have not been as popular as they should be. Uh, a lot of people think that they need to tweak the user interface. Nokia was known for great user interfaces at one time, and they're not anymore. Uh, so uh, whatever happens, he is going to preside over a change. That is obvious, that they, they hired someone so different uh, rather than promoting from within. They they want somebody to shake stuff up. So things are going to change at Nokia. And they've got Android to deal with. Android's becoming the second biggest mobile operating system in the world, according to the Gartner Group. Uh, by the end of this year, they think uh, Android will have 17.7% of the market share, edging out BlackBerry and taking second place behind Symbian. And Symbian, I mean, if you look out over the next few years as far as projected growth, I mean, both the iOS and Android in five years, if things go the way that they're going, will be well ahead. I don't know. It's all kind of related, isn't well, it? Well, yeah. Nokia's, Nokia's got some time, right? I mean, they're coast... They've got some time. This is not like in six months they're out of there. The, the, this Gartner story says that they are going to continue to be the number one without changing anything. Right. Uh, so that they've got some room to maneuver because they have such a dominant position. But they need to capture space in the growing smartphone market, which right now they're bolstered up by just feature phones, by, uh, by, by simpler handsets. Android being the biggest uh, mobile OS, um, or uh, eventually perhaps, isn't a huge surprise because there's like 4 billion phones that run Android now. I mean, what, doesn't that just make sense? How would iOS ever stay on top with just mm. yeah, and one I phone? I don't know. Does Apple care? I don't, I don't think Apple... I mean, I, I don't think Apple sees Android as enough of the same kind of animal. I'm sure they care, but they're not in direct competition. They're doing it totally different ways. They don't, yeah, they, they, Apple has never been worried about dominating the marketplace as witnessed by OS X, as right. witnessed by Macs. They consider but them a success. Don't, don't they consider themselves the world's biggest mobile media creator kind of you know aren't they the biggest platform when you include ipods in the equation well for um, you, for apps yeah sure uh, no, they, but like in terms of the hardware sales though as well do they not consider themselves the biggest in that way I've, i remember steve jobs just going on and he phrased it in such a way and he showed mm -hmm. all these other big names and then basically said we're number one and i was like sweet stock prices going up um but <laughs> otherwise do you own stock it's, Terpster? I might own a little bit. I read a story once that Disclosure. said if you had bought stock instead of the laptop, you'd be like a millionaire now, like when they first came out. And I bought the laptop. So I thought, well, hang on. 
I'm a thinking man now. I'll buy the stock this time. And it's not been half as enjoyable as a laptop, in fairness. I wouldn't recommend it to many right. people. The stock has less yeah. functionality. It is. And it's, it's more portable, um, but you can do less on it. So, yeah. yeah anyway, uh, like I said, I don't think, um, I don't think, like you're right, I don't think Apple really would care about this. That they're not in competition, as you're saying. Um, I think what's more interesting is just what Android could become, like as, as a growing, as it kind of, you know, I don't want to say Skynet, but I'm thinking Skynet, really. If it keeps on this growth, how long before, you know, Android takes over? It, I, they may have already taken over. And we just it don't may know already. It. Yeah. Uh, but but that's, that's the interesting thing right now is that there is no Microsoft versus Apple in, in the phone race. Everyone tries to make it Apple versus Google as a, as a sort of uh, analog to that, but blackberry is very into this and symbian is dominant still mm. uh and and yeah maybe you could call symbian the unix of its time perhaps uh but but this is this is much more complicated and you brought up the very good point that this isn't just about phones this is about mobile devices ipads and 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 music players and and forget music players ipod touches a tablet and nokia is very good mm. with the tablets if they could get one of those to really catch fire they could easily be the competition to Apple in that space. So it's Gartner Group is is all they're saying is like, wow, people are picking up Android phones right and left. That's that's what everyone needs to watch out for. Apple, not so much. That's not their game. They're not going to put their their operating system on a bunch of different handsets. But Nokia mm -hmm. is, and BlackBerry uh, or RIM is going to put it on a bunch of different Blackberries. E even though Nokia and RIM make their own handsets, they're going to put out many dozens of models not just one apple's not apple's going to continue to do that we do the one thing very well that's the way they work let's take a moment to uh, thank our sponsor slingbox slingbox lets you watch your home tv anywhere you go on most any portable devices those portable devices we were just talking about iphone ipod touch blackberry your laptop your macbook uh, anything with an internet connection, uh, often over 3G even, you can get your home television. And, and what does that mean? Well, you don't have to pay for it. You just hook up a sling box to your home television and the internet. And then anywhere that you have the internet and you have your sling box software installed, you can watch your home television. Anything on your DVR, anything that comes over your cable box or over the air, whatever it is you have. Uh, sports, news, movies, you don't have to pay anything extra for it. Check out Slingbox at a Best Buy near you or visit slingbox.com slash twit. Thanks, Slingbox. It's good. You could almost use it um, in relation to this next story, I feel, like some form of security device. Like I would know if I was away from home the second my you know TV got nicked. Yeah, because, because the would signal would working. go away. Yeah. Right. Or, so, like, or the robbers might yeah. change the channel on you. Exactly. I'd be like, whoa, whoa, at least let me finish watching my show before you take it. <laughs> Obviously, uh, we're talking about some burglaries. Here, here's what happened. You remember pleaserobme.com? Yeah, they were trying to expose the idea that letting the world know your geolocation was not smart because they could come to your house when you were far away and take all your money. Well, apparently something like that happened with Facebook Places in New Hampshire. Uh, a burglary ring has been busted. They targeted people, or at least they claim to have targeted people, who checked into places on Facebook. That let them know when no one was home, and then they broke in to 50 homes and stole $100,000 worth of goods. Now, what we don't know at this point is, were these actually Facebook friends of theirs? Is this a, is this a phishing scheme? Yeah, I mean, how did they obtain the information to know that these people were far enough away from home or were going to be gone long enough for the robberies to be successful? Right, because Facebook places, you can make it public for everyone to know. And you maybe can. there was just enough people in Nashua, New Hampshire, who, who were doing that, that they didn't have maybe to Maybe it's be a friends. gossipy town. But maybe it's like, you know, they've got a wide ring of friends. And they were like, ha, 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 we're going to sneak you know, it, into Barry's place tonight. It's a very good, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's something to think about if you're one of those people who adds everybody who wants to be your friend on Facebook. You might want to think about Facebook places privacy settings you know right now i, I allow you to check me in somewhere yeah but what if i didn't want someone to know that i was home uh i i would have to turn off you i let all my friends check me in everywhere. or if you were operating a sting right and you said tom check <laughs> me in at the twit cottage but i'll be here at home 
so I can catch the Nashua robbers. Well, and then there's the argument that <laughs> you always hear about where people go, listen, if you're not home and someone really wanted to rob you, they could sit outside and wait till your Just garage door leave. closed yeah. and you walk mm. the driveway. But that requires quite a bit of surveillance effort on their part. If you're, if you're like, hey, everybody, going to Europe, leaving now, at SFO, later, and then you check in in Tokyo... 17 hours later, I mean, you're really not home. Well, how it's do they know clear. that you haven't left somebody to watch your house? Exactly, yeah. It doesn't say my house is empty, by the way. Well, that, or maybe that is. Maybe the status update is, you know, so go may, and check out my stuff. <laughs> maybe our location um, check-ins have to be smarter. You know how in the olden days we, we would always say on an answering machine, I can't come to the phone right now, rather right. than saying I'm not home. I'm so not home right now. So Please we have to me. check in and... <laughs> Hey, left the boyfriend and the Rottweiler at home. Going to get some grub with the girls. Yeah. And then leave a light on and you're good. Left the pack of left pit bulls off leash. Left my mines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lots of people are having a party at my house. Do you know like people house? leave the lights on? Do you ever get like those timers that put your lights on? And so the burglars think I'm going to rob. Oh, wait. No, they just switched the lights on. <laughs> they must be ghosts and at home. Um, do you reckon you could get something like that for Facebook? That just checks you in at home mid while through your oh, holiday. Oh, easily, yeah. Somebody could write a yeah. script for that, no problem. Yeah, yeah. You know exactly. what you could do? I, I, yeah, I can time blog entries yeah. on Squarespace. Then I can port my Squarespace blog entries into my Facebook page. So people, you know, at like 11 p.m. Yeah. every night would be like, "I'm home. This is so cool. Yeah. It's so fun to be at home with my knives." Yeah, <laughs> and my loaded just guns. Just sorting through my firearms. I've got uh, so yes. many. The Zucker bandits better stay away from me tonight because I'm so home. Actually, I got to give Caroline McCarthy at CNET credit for coining the name Zucker bandits. That's pretty awesome. This story just smells to me like taking something out of proportion. Uh, oh, in other yeah, words, it was like some some news reporter said, wait, you used Facebook places? This is a huge story. And and, and we, we still don't know all the details of what actually happened. Uh, maybe they just said, yeah, we saw on Facebook places that, you know, our our friend was going out of town. So we robbed her. But we knew otherwise. We knew <laughs> she was really going out of town. But that's how we found out the first place. Right. Don't rob your friends. I want to find the them. first. I mean, unless uh, they're just kind of really forgetful. Yeah, I want I want though to hear about the first kind of person rumbled for having an affair due to Facebook space. Oh, that's been you know, places. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't care about places, the rest right, of it. Yeah. Yeah. People try checking to, in. Try at, not to check in. Checking in at mistress's apartment. Yeah, exactly. That that's me. I'm like, oh, and that's gone Quite out to all giveaway. your friends. <laughs> Cha ching. But you know, with uh, with the rest of it, I'm not too not too bothered really. You know, people getting robbed. Uh, you know, it happens all the time anyway. You know. I, I want I want the more seedy sexual side of Facebook places. That's ah. what I want to hear about. <laughs> Lives ruined. Yeah. Yeah. That, exactly. If you're gonna hide the story, that's what that's what you. Yeah. Do. Yeah. I want tears. All right. Well, there may be tears, or there may be joy. Tears of joy over uh, WordPress.com adding some more social networking features. If you're a WordPress.com user. Yeah, so if you're already using WordPress, uh, a new subscription feature is going to let users subscribe to other WordPress.com hosted blogs. So friends of yours, if you and I are both using WordPress, then we can subscribe to each other and then be able to monitor each other's new posts in a subscription tab, which is very similar for anybody who uses Tumblr. It's very similar to the Tumblr dashboard type of thing. So if I subscribe to you and Eric and Terpster, then I can just go to into my little subscription tab and see what everybody's doing without actually having to physically go to all of your WordPress blogs. So it's not, it's certainly uh, a concept that WordPress is, it's a little late to the party on because everybody seems to be adding in all of these, be able to connect with your community within our service yeah. services. Well, and WordPress.com is the, is has got a perfect platform for that because it's it's not folks that are installing WordPress on their own sites. It's a bunch of people who've signed up for the service, right? Uh, and so they've got a community built in that they're just saying, "Hey, you know what? Let's take advantage of this. Let's provide some ways for that people can use if they want to interact with each other." Yeah, the community, the common domain is already there. Um, it the only thing that's kind of weird about it to me, uh, or at least interesting to see how it'll develop, is blogs are still that kind of old dinosaur where where people still expect longer form content. It's not like the 140 character tweets or even on Tumblr. It's there's still an emphasis on reblogging or, or putting up a picture and it, things are constricted a little bit more. So the old blog where there's a rambling, here's how my life is going. I mean, that's why I don't update my blog very often because I always feel compelled to like give people the big spiel. 
I don't know how much that'll catch on as far as uh, community goes. Or maybe it will. Yeah. Uh, well, well, we'll we'll keep an eye on it. It's uh, interesting, by the way, that TechCrunch and GigaOM actually do their sites on WordPress.com. Right. Uh, it's not just your average everyday schmo, not just mommy right? bloggers yeah it's uh it's it's some big sites too that that are going to be able to take advantage of this so that might juice it up a little yeah ebay is claiming victory over craigslist uh in a lawsuit uh craigslist and ebay have been at, at odds since craigslist accused ebay of stealing information by being a partner in and a part owner in craigslist and then starting their own classified system and so craigslist Diluted their shares. I guess eBay owned what, like twenty eight percent of the company. Uh, twenty eight point four. Twenty eight point four, and did a little share diluting to bring it down to about twenty four percent. Saying, right. "Hey, listen, you got in here, you know trade secrets, and then you just went and made a competing product on eBay.com. You can't do that." And so eBay took them to court uh, and and won. Uh, the judge has reinstated their twenty eight point four percent stake in Craigslist. Craigslist has countersued, uh, accusing eBay of using its minority stake to steal corporate trade secrets, and that lawsuit is yet to be resolved. So eBay has only partially won. They they haven't finally won. They were also looking a for a seat front. on the board, which they have not been granted. That's at this true. Point. Yeah, they didn't get that seat on the board either. One of the kind of weird little details of this whole thing is, I guess last year when they were in court, uh, when, when Craigslist countersued or eBay countersued for the first time. It came out in court that Craig Newmark had never actually visited eBay's site to see what their classified section was all about. Yeah, he had minions to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It just, I got people for that. You just, he's just... He's if just, they say it violates, I believe Are him. they violating? Okay, I believe you. Let's go to court. <laughs> yeah. See it. Let's courthouse. do it. The lawyers will look at it. I don't need to. No. I'm sure it's in violation. All right, let's finish It sounds up. vaguely similar to what we've done. So, yeah, I think that's a good enough cause to go to court. It's yeah. good. Yeah. That's the way you'd run your business, right? I would. Well, I just I just put a buy it now sticker on everything, really. It works for eBay. Yeah. Maybe I think, Craig, you know, Craigslist should have just put a buy it now sticker on themselves. Yeah, exactly. Look, and you don't get 28.4%. Like, you either buy us or you don't. Yeah, exactly. Job done. Let's finish up with some high dynamic range photography, HDR images. Not the kind of high dynamic range ones that, that are really just tone mapped that you see on the iPhone 4. Uh, these are real HDR images taken at multiple expo exposure levels by Soviet Montage Productions. They used, uh, what, what, what was the um, equipment that they used, Terpster? It was uh, two Canon uh, 5D Mark II cameras. Which are uh, pretty pretty badass, I believe is the technical term for yeah, them. Yeah, they're like the best prosumer camera. Oh um, yeah, yeah, they are very very nice. They're full, not one Ds. Let's not let's not overreact here, but they are nice cameras. So here's and, what I, yeah, what I'm confused about is okay, so we're looking at two cameras, two Mark IIs. Uh, that were what, like right next to each other? I mean, did we have to use any photo stitching? Yeah, apparently because they Because wouldn't they, they have used, slightly different angles? Yeah, so the way they did it is they overexposed one and they underexposed the other, right. and then they composited them together to make the HDR okay. image. Uh, but the way they 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 actually kept the the the, the photos the, the same. The aspect. Yeah, the angles the same was using a beam splitter. How do you do that? Well, it's a, like a prism. And it, yeah. just, it just sends the... Uh, the sing sing the the signal the light that's coming at the the beam splitter splits off to the two cameras, but it's the same picture, so it doesn't have it's, any. It's very important that when you're doing this sort of uh, photography, though, is that you never cross the beams. Um, otherwise, it just you know then bad you, stuff happens. You split apart. Do, can you yeah. pick up a beam splitter at like Best Buy or I mean, what? How do you get a beam splitter? They're not they're not that sophisticated, actually. Yeah, you, I don't know if you could pick one up at a Best Buy, but a science lab. Uh -huh. They use them a lot for um, quantum experimentation. I just look Can at that I do video this with and it's my like, eyes. that is amazing looking. Look at that. Look at those images they're, they're by doing, themselves. Yeah, they're doing something tricky because, look, his face, for instance, the half of him is not even in both lenses. Well, and they're, yet they're, it, they're just showing this is what it would look like. Uh, they weren't showing the full image of both of those uh, in the demonstration that we're looking oh, at. Oh, oh, that's right. No, you're, yeah, yeah. It just, it's <laughs> very, um, you can't see it so much with the scenery stuff, but when you see the people, it's got that, like, Sin City and yeah. color thing. I mean, it's really cool. Some people in the chat room are like, it looks fake. It but does I think look it looks like fake. CG. I think it, it looks does. 
Yeah, it just looks cool. Especially well, it's this an shot. interesting effect. He looks like he's from the afterlife a little bit. He may be. <laughs> he has a we, go- we, we he don't has know a if ghostly, he is. Or. Yeah. Ghostly glow. Anyway, uh, so this this has caused quite a buzz on the internet today. A lot of folks are talking about it, uh, and we we thought we'd pass it along because it's a really nifty way of making some real HDR. In case you you want mm. to take a look at it, so good job, Soviet montage production, and great name. Yes. Ah, on to the news views. <laughs> Intel has announced that Paul Odellini will demo his company's next-gen CPU GPU chip codenamed Sandy Bridge next week at IDF, that's the Intel Developers Forum, while AMD has immediately replied with plans to put its own Zakati. Is that how you say it? Zakate, Zakati, I haven't heard it pronounced out loud yet. Z A C A T. Zakate, maybe uh, like the beer. They've put I like it. Zakate sounds, sounds Italian. up on display at the same time as Intel is demoing Sandy Bridge. Same time, same city in San Francisco. Both chips combine the CPU and the GPU on one slice of silicon. Cool. It sounds like a fight night thing it's like you know at the same time in the same city intel versus amd you know, I would totally tune versus in. sandy yeah. bridge Zuckatel. sandy bridge that sounds like a, a you know like a horse at the kentucky Derby. i think it sounds like a porn star but maybe Here that's just sandy different bridge mindset. Running around the- yeah all right, by a no margin web surfers spend more minutes visiting facebook than using google YouTube, and Gmail combined during August, according to new research. So that's just time spent. Facebook, you know, a year ago it was Yahoo that was the leader, and they are third now. But using Google, YouTube, and Gmail combined? Yeah. They, well, in other words, fa- people spent more time on Facebook than all, all the Google properties. Yeah, combined. Yeah. Uh, by no margin, I understand, but that's still, I don't know, that's, uh, that's, that's a crazy uh, Facebook study. should make their own mobile phone operating system. I reckon, you know, they I, might I as well just do it I don't think all. we hang out on Facebook as much as some people do. I certainly don't. Yeah. Americans who use electronic media to engage with art are three times more likely to go to a gallery, theater, or concert than those who never go online, a survey suggests. So take that, <laughs> all of you who think we're just sitting in our basements and never leave the house. We watch art. But I don't get this. So people who are interested in media are more likely to consume media but in, in lots of different ways. Right. That yeah. doesn't seem what like news to me. What about people who go online but no, don't but it's consume art. art? Yeah. Are they more likely to go and see art? No. If you, if you go online and just look at Google homepage, maybe that's art. Americans who use electronic yeah, like media it. to engage with art are three times more likely to go than those It's probably who because go. of things like the Google, you, you know, when they do the different Google it makes image. You more likely yeah, to I'm like, like oh, it's Picasso Day. Sweet. I wonder who Picasso <laughs> is. I'll go out and see. There you go. See? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Apple's free case offer for iPhone 4 owners is going to come to an end. This month, in fact, on September 30th, and Apple says they won't continue it. No, 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 you've had enough time. In a post on the Apple website, Apple explains that the iPhone antenna and tenu- attenuation problem is even smaller than the original thought, originally thought. Antenna gate, not as big a deal as the media would have you think. So if you buy an iPhone after September 30th, you can still get a free bumper, but you'll need to call Apple Care, and you it'll be a big be hassle, annoying. and you just won't do it. Yeah. Not a huge surprise, but Adobe announced on Friday that it would resume development on Flash for iPhone. The packager that recompiles Flash as native iOS code is part of Flash Professional CS5. So no Flash for the browser on iPhone, but the ability to write in Flash and then recompile it as an iOS device. That's back. Great. Nice. Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas are on their way to the Mac later this year, according to Rockstar Games. Information was part of a post on the Game Maker's Facebook page. Another person who spends a lot of time on Facebook, I guess. And those who actually engage with Grand Theft Auto online are more likely to engage with Grand Theft Auto in real life. And add modern museums of art with Picasso. It is an art. Uh, boutique book publisher and geek James Bridal has printed the 12,000 edits made to the controversial Wikipedia entry for the Iraq War between December 2004 and November 2009. He's printed it up as a 7,000-page, 12-volume set of books. We're not sure if you can order the set, but you could make your own because it's Wikipedia. <laughs> So all of those edits are you can anybody can go back and look at them. Yeah, yeah, they're all preserved in the history. Holy cow! Are there That's any kind of really stupid edits in there? That's yeah, what I'd be no. interested in. Seeing. No, they're all. No. There was nothing inaccurate at all. Just a lot of editing. I would like to see just just completely like 
I didn't know Chuck Norris defeated all the Iraqis and named it Chuck Norris Land. Ah, yeah, that, that, was, sweet. that was deleted yeah. the next yeah. day. I've got good news for anybody who's got a mobile carrier they think might be gouging them. A Google Voice app is apparently headed back to the iPhone. So this, of course, is just for iPhone users. <laughs> Apple has told a third-party developer that his GV Mobile app will be approved when resubmitted. GV Mobile connects an iPhone user to Google Voice for cheap calls and text messaging and sold well for the months it was listed in the iTunes store. But when an official application for Google got rejected by Apple, GV Mobile was thrown out too. It's been available on Cydia for jailbroken iPhones ever since. So this is the, the new guidelines, the new kinder, gentler app store. If GV Mobile can do it, what about just straight up Google Voice? Yeah, you think so, right? One would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and finally, robots are capable of deceiving humans. They are liars. Why? Yes. How? Well, this is coming out of Georgia, or as the register puts it, Georgia, Georgia America. America. <laughs> uh, we have been concerned from the very beginning with the ethical implications related to the creation of robots capable of deception, says Ronald Arkin, interactive computing professor at the Georgia <laughs> Institute of Technology. We understand, though, that there are beneficial and deleterious aspects. Essentially, they made a robot that would knock down some markers on a trail so that another robot could try to follow it. But it was capable of going and knocking down markers and then backtracking and going another way so that the robot wouldn't be able to track it. So the robot um, who was in hot pursuit was getting confused. In yes. fact, I think it was like 70% of the time the robot trying to make a getaway did because it fooled the other robot. They've developed algorithms that allow a robot to determine whether it should deceive a human or other intelligent machine and design techniques that help the robot select the best deceptive strategy to reduce its chance of being discovered. So really all they've shown in, in experimentation is that a robot can, can deceive, deceive another, another robot. robot. But, but both robots were created with human minds, so they're <laughs> deceiving themselves in a weird inception way. And we're not entirely certain that Professor Ronald Arkin is not a Cylon. No. I'm it slightly worried, but job. I got really excited when I saw this story, the picture on it. The guy at the back looks like, ta-da, check out this sweet human-looking robot. And I was like, oh, it's amazing. And it turns out he's just another dude. And yeah. there's two little robots They're on the just, floor. Yeah. But well, I was, you know, he's, he's totally just showing it. It's like, yeah, check out this cool robot. You would think he's a human, but this robot is deceiving no, you. Those are actually like, people. Oh. I think but then it turns out if someone's you. knocked over. The robots the are just hiding behind, you know, boxes from each other. Exactly. That's how they deceive them. Oh, don't tell them I'm in the box. What does this mean <laughs> for all of our Roombas? Because when I come home, I don't want to think the floor has been cleaned right. if it hasn't. Well, but if you if you're if it, it, it tricks you well enough, exactly. You look under the rug. Difference. Come on, Roomba. I didn't. I, I said ignorance back is bliss, isn't sweep it? Under yeah. the rug. Ugh, terrible. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the calendar. We just have a couple things to tell you about this week or yeah. today. Yeah, on the calendar, T-Mobile G2 retails for one hundred and ninety nine dollars at Best Buy starting on October sixth. So if you're interested, save start saving your pennies. And uh, this Sunday, September 12th, Nintendo is to drop the price on the DSi and the DSi XL by $20. So that'll make them $149 and $169, respectively. Yeah, so there you go. Get get your uh, wallets out. Don't buy a Nintendo on Saturday. Don't That's do it. That's the wrong day. Bad day for that. All right, we got, a, we got a voicemail here. Our caller uh, heard us talking about how 4G was better uh, when we were near a window than it was when we were inside the hotel and he explains why. Hey guys, I just wanted to make a comment on the question that there was on the uh, 4G network and how it works. The reason that it does work better in near windows and in the outside is because of the wavelength, the wavelength of 4G. It, it gets stopped really quickly by buildings. So the closer you are to a window to the outside, the faster it works. And I do have it in my 4G uh, Evo, and I've, I've tested it in Atlanta close to 6 megabit, so it's really good when you're outside. Bye, and love the show. And uh, that's that's one thing I'd forgotten about WiMAX. It does not penetrate the buildings as well, apparently. Too short of a wave, wavelength, I suppose. You know, my 3G problems usually go away when I either go outside or go next to a window, so yeah. this is this is behavior I'm, I'm familiar with already. I'm upset, though. I don't want to feel inadequate that my, my wavelength is too short. I don't want to be like, hey, how long's your wave? Oh, my one's too short. It can't penetrate anything. You know, that's just, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to be conscious about my mobile phone signal. Right. 
So, but but you know, sadly, they, they sadly, Terpster, unlike other areas of life, uh, the, the frequency and the length of your wave does make a difference. Really? It's not just when, the length. When talking about mobile phones. I was told it's what you did for the, the signal uh, the that makes, yeah. it, makes it. No, not it is mobiles. all about the length. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's all about the protocol. There are so many factors. The power of the transmitter. That go yeah. into. That's true. There, are, not, there are a lot of different not, not factors. Can I any form of like additional supplement that will lengthen my wavelength? You could get a femtocell. Yeah? Yeah. That what might help. That <laughs> it would give you better coverage. All right, okay, cool. cool. I, I realize I may not be playing into the metaphor you're <laughs> after here. Kind of. It went, but, it went a little askew, oh, but, but it still yeah. works. It still works. Uh, all right. We're on, children and laughing. On to the emails to TNT at twit.tv. <laughs> Bill, or Widget1, if you're looking for him in the chat room, says, Yesterday and the day before, you had comments on the practicality of a voice-activated remote control. I had one for many years, but I had to give it up because I couldn't program the new digital remote control codes for the TVs. Uh, when it worked, it allowed me to program macros so I could turn on the home theater, VCR, TV, and switch to channel 3 just by saying, play movie. I never had a false channel change or any other action on the remote due to TV or FM audio. Well, it sounds like Bill got screwed over by the digital age. Yeah, what's up with that? They should have been using similar codes. Ought to be a way to hack that, I bet. I don't know. I, I don't know if I even want to say play movie. Just I saw Judge Dredd last night. I was watching it just because I do that occasionally. And <laughs> they've got a sweet computer and it's called Central. And every time they want something done, they say Central and then they say something. And I would, if I had this, I would have to program it so everything was Central, play movie. You know? And it would take longer, but I would feel more in that character and I would be more like the law as it, such. It would feel more uh, superior to just pressing the... Oh, exactly. Button. You know, the, the button just wouldn't have the same right. impact anymore. I wouldn't right. feel like I'm controlling everything versus central play movie. And I'd be like, ah, oh, <laughs> Plus, sweet. if you lose, you can't lose the remote if you're doing it by no. voice. Who, no. who loses remotes really anymore? I mean, my Comcast remote is like 12 pounds. Type yes pounds. in the chat room if you've lost your remote at some point. Oh, okay. Like in the course of a life, maybe. <laughs> but how about in the last two years? Who's losing last, remotes? Yeah. I mean, that's a fair point. Last I'm slightly week, annoyed says that my, my iPhone doesn't do it properly yet. I mean, I know you can do, like, Wi-Fi remotes and stuff like that, but if is there a voice remote that I can then do over Wi-Fi? Can I change my tracks well, on you my can, iPhone? Well, you can set up a Skype voice? phone next to your television and then just, you know, call it. What's that one super special universal remote? I'm forgetting who makes it. Logitech Harmony? Yeah. I got the is the, one. Does yeah, Harmony cool. have voice activation? Involved? Not, it does pretty much everything no. else. Yeah. Well, there's your next cool. There you remote. go, Logitech. Yeah, get on it. Start doing something. All right, next email from Matthew who says, Just a thought. Could iTunes 10 be a placeholder or a transitional release? When iLife 11 and iWork 11 are released for 2011, as many expect, will we see a radically redesigned iTunes 11? Perhaps the strange UI choices are introducing a new look that is coming. Going even further, could we see Mac... O X O S X I instead of 10.7 would be X I is 11. Yeah. That would create a nice piece of symmetry with all the version 11 software in 2011. And then the next iPhone would be the iPhone double one. <laughs> oh, I like it. It's, it's returned you know, to one and they just put two iPhone ones together and it's like got double the resolution of yeah. the original iPhone. And it's like, how did they do it? Well, they just, what does it mean? Together. This is the yeah. classic, what will Apple do, conspiracy theory. But what I love about it, though, is that I totally believe Apple would release a brand new operating system just so that all of their software says 1-1 for the year 1-1. That kind of, I, I don't doubt that for a second, that Apple wouldn't think that that would look really nice. I'm, I'm sort of with so. you, because I was when I started reading Matthew's email, when we first got it in the inbox, I was like, oh, okay, another crazy conspiracy theory. But by the end, when I was like, Oh, but then they get that nice symmetry of 11s <laughs> everywhere. You're right. I could totally see them doing that. So what do we think? This, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. But, this is but still, it's not outside the realm. It, um, this isn't like the the rantings of a madman here. I'll give it a 34% chance of happening. <laughs> Repeating, of course. <laughs> well, actually, 33.33. Three, 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 three. Infinity plus one. Three. three. Three, We're done. Three, three. Thanks, everybody, three, for watching our uh, episode of TNT. Thanks three. to Terpster for being on the show. Terpster! Three. Let ooh, folks ooh, know yay. where they can find you three. on the internet. 
Uh, what's that? Where can they find you on the internet? <laughs> they can just on the internet. If you Google my name, it comes up instantly now. It's amazing. Uh, or you can go to terpsvision.tv or hypotheticalhelp.com or twitter.com forward slash the underscore T. And you can find us on the internet at twit.tv slash TNT. If you would like to email us, please do write us a little note. Send it to twit uh, or TNT at twit.tv. Or you can also give us a call. We have a phone number. It's a free local call in Butler, Indiana, 260-TNT-SHOW. We'll see you on Monday. Three. Three. Three.